So a useful way to limit your exposure to airborne pathogens, so things like SARS-CoV-2 and influenza, is to physically remove the aerosol that carries these pathogens from the room. Uh, there are a couple ways you can do this. Uh, one way is through filtration. So this is an engineering solution. And another way is through ventilation. So doing things like opening your window. So having a more ventilated or better ventilated space is good. So the question then becomes like, how do you know if this room is well ventilated? Uh, what can I do to make the ventilation better? Is there anything I can do to make the ventilation worse? Uh, so in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain how you can use CO2 monitors, just like this type, to measure how well your rooms are being ventilated. Ventilation is described mathematically as the air changes per hour, or ACH for short. The ACH describes the rate in which the air in the room has been removed and replaced with clean air. In this equation, Q is the amount of air that is flowing through the room over a period of time. This will have units like cubic feet per minute. Vol is the volume of the room, which will be units like cubic feet. Now, you would think that of an ACH of 1 would mean that 100% of the air in the room would be replaced every hour. If the room was a pipe, this would be true. Every cubic foot of room air would be replaced by one cubic foot of fresh air added. However, for a room, this is just not the case. This is because the fresh air that's added to the room is mixed with the air already in the room, and thus only a fraction of the air is removed. As a result, an ACH of 1 actually means only about 63% of the air is removed per hour. All right, so in terms of airborne disease transmission, what really matters is the time it takes for a significant proportion of the air to be physically replaced by fresh air. The relationship between ACH and the time taken to replace 99% of the air in the room is shown here. You'll note that the relationship is not linear. For example, an ACH of one takes 276 minutes to replace 99% of the air. By increasing the ACH to 4, the time taken to replace 99% of the air drops to 69 minutes. This is a dramatic drop in time, demonstrating the importance of increasing the ventilation in poorly ventilated spaces. Increasing the ACH from 4 to 10 drops this time even further, down to 28 minutes. This more than doubling of the ACH leads to about a halving of the time taken to replace the air. If the ACH is increased from 10 all the way to 50, the time will drop but not as dramatically. This means that after a certain point, the payoff from increasing the ACH is just not as significant. Now, regardless, the higher the ACH, the better. Anything that you do to increase the ACH will help lower the amount of infectious virus-containing aerosol that is in the air, and thus will lower the risk of transmission. All right, so how do you measure the ACH? Well, the first thing you do is you go out and buy yourself a CO2 monitor. Um, this type is particularly popular, but really any, any type can do. All that you're really looking for when you're purchasing your CO2 monitor is one that records the CO2 values when you're not around. To measure the ACH, first you need to measure the outdoor CO2. You do this by simply putting your CO2 monitor outside. In cities, the outdoor CO2 concentration can get higher than the commonly reported 420 parts per billion. For example, in my back garden in Bristol, it looks like the CO2 concentration is about 578. Next, simply put the CO2 monitor in the room that you're interested in. Then, you need to increase the CO2 concentration. You can do this any way you like, from exercising to breathing to turning on the boiler. And finally, leave the room. Ideally, leave the building entirely. Make a note of anything that you think will affect the ventilation. For example, are any windows or doors open? That kind of thing. After at least an hour, come back and look at the data. The data from my experiment is here. All right. So from the data, the numbers you want to write down are as follows. The outdoor CO2 concentration the concentration when you left the room, the CO2 concentration when the loss is a little over halfway between the outdoor CO2 and the CO2 when you left the room, and finally, the length of time between these two points. Now, put these numbers into this equation and solve for the ACH. This is where you put those numbers. 
And I'll show you how to calculate that, calculate that using my calculator. First, you'll need to set your calculator to scientific. Uh, apologies for the slow typing. All right, so for my data, I calculate an ACH of 0 0.52 for my kitchen. Okay, so <laughs> my ACH in my kitchen is 0 0.52, which isn't particularly high, but it's actually pretty common for old, older homes. Uh, for context, I live in a 160-year-old house in England, so ACH of, a point, of 0 0.52 is about par for the course. Um, the question then becomes, is there anything I can do to increase the ventilation rate in my home? And is there any sort of combination of windows being opened that will maximize the ventilation rate of my home? So this is the floor plan of my home. And this is where the CO2 monitor was placed during my experiment. When everything was closed, the ACH was 0 0.52. So what happens when I say open my kitchen window? Well... When I do that, I get numbers that look like this. And when I put them into the calculator, I get an ACH of 1.3, or 1.43, sorry. That's a little better, but still under the recommended value of 4. Now, when I open both the window in the front of my house and the kitchen window, things get even better, where the ACH increases all the way up to 4.8. You can see how simple changes like this, like the combination of windows to open, will maximize your ACH. For example, here we see that opening the windows across the house likely creates an effective draft through the house, which again increases the ventilation. Every house is different. Also, the furnishing of every home is different. For example, something may obstruct the draft. How the wind blows onto every house is also different, and this too will affect the ventilation rate. What this all means is that for you to understand your home and what works best for your home, you'll need to check, and to figure that out, you'll need to do the kinds of experiments I've shown here. Now, some things to consider when interpreting your data. Like all science, repetition is important. The more times you repeat a measurement, the more confidence you will have in it. Second, the air exchange may not be coming solely from outside, meaning that if the next room over has a high CO2 level, the decay rate you're measuring may, may well be affected. Thus, to get a better understanding of how your home is ventilated, you ought to do this experiment throughout your home. And over time, you can build a picture of how your home is ventilated and where the air flows and how fast. So with just a simple to use device and time, you have a, the ability to understand how well infectious aerosol is being removed from your home and the kind of things that you can do to increase the rate in which infectious aerosol is being removed from your home. Um, I would encourage you to try this out because it allows you to understand, well, at least better understand, how your house works and the kind of things that you can do to increase the indoor air quality in your home. And plus, science is fun. <laughs> All right, um, so if you like this video, please like. If you found it interesting and would like to see more, please subscribe. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below or ask me on Blue Sky or Twitter. And yeah, with that, Mix has all the references that I use to produce this video. So thanks. Take it easy.